Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We've got another Windows Mini PC to check out today. This one powered by a Ryzen 8845HS processor. This is the GMK Tech K8 Plus, and it is a nice upgrade actually from a computer called the K8 that had similar specs that they released just a few months ago. This one solves its biggest problem, which is the performance of its USB 4 ports, but also adds some additional expandability with an Oculink port here as well, which I'll describe as we work our way through the video. So we're gonna take a look at how this mini PC performs here in just a second, but I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from GMK Tech. However, they did not review or approve what you're about to see before it was uploaded. No other compensation was received, and all of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this mini PC is all about. Now, the price point on this comes in at $549, but that's after you click on a coupon that will likely be attached to the product listing. If you don't click on the coupon, you will pay a lot more. So be sure to do that to get the right price on this mini PC. GMK Tech does this with a lot of their products, so just be aware of that. Now inside, as I mentioned, this has the Ryzen 8845HS processor that is an eight core chip. It's got a nice onboard GPU as well. This has 32 gigabytes of RAM in dual channel configuration. It is DDR5 RAM as you can see there, and it's easily upgradable if you buy new modules. This can go up to 96 gigabytes of RAM, so you can turn this into a pretty nice little server. You also have an NVMe slot. It'll be occupied by a one terabyte SSD, but you also have an additional slot there for adding another hard drive if you want. So you could dual boot Windows and Linux or just have some extra storage for whatever you are doing with your mini PC. Now, what I like about this one is its expandability options, even beyond the RAM and the storage we just talked about. On the front here, we have an OcuLink port this is something you're going to be seeing a lot more of, both in mini PCs like this one, but also laptops. Now what Oculink lets you do is buy a device like this one here that gives you a PCI Express slot and a cable that will plug into the computer here, and it's pretty much a direct-to-bus connection. You don't have the overhead of a Thunderbolt port in the middle. So theoretically, you should get the same rate of performance with this and this, that you would with a desktop PC with a similar slot built onto its motherboard. This is a PCI4 Oculink port, and these run at X4, so some really high-end GPUs may not do as well, but mid-level ones should perform okay. I've got a 4060 coming in, and we'll test that with this board here along with a Thunderbolt enclosure in an upcoming video to see how it all works. The problem at the moment is Oculink is not all that elegant. I haven't found any uh, enclosures that I can get that have everything built into a single box. So right now you get one of these boards with a metal thing on the bottom of it that you put your card on and then you have to get a separate power supply to plug into it. And I'm sure as Oculink becomes more popular, we'll start to see better solutions. But right now it feels a little bit like a science experiment, but we will be exploring this in a future review when my uh, GPU comes in. I wanted to dedicate a whole video to Oculink because it's going to come up a lot more in the future, I suspect. Now, this also has a USB 4.0 port on board, and this is compatible with Thunderbolt. Unlike the other GMK Tech K8 that I looked at a little while ago, the K8 Plus runs that port at its full performance. So, a little bit earlier, we ran my Blackmagic Disk Speed Test with a Thunderbolt drive and there I was getting read and write speeds north of two gigabytes per second, which is what I expected out of that port. This is much better than the K8 uh, GMK Tech we looked at earlier. So the Plus definitely has some improvements here beyond that Oculink port. The other cool thing is that you've got one of these USB 4 ports on the front, and you've got a second one here on the back. So you have two uh, Thunderbolt ports, essentially, in addition to that Oculink. So you've got a lot of expansion potential here without having to go out and buy a larger desktop, but you will have stuff hanging off of it. Here you've got two USB 3 ports in the front, USB A ports. That's where I'm going to be plugging in my keyboard dongle for the best range. You have a headphone microphone jack here in the front along with the power button. On the back you can see we've got my power connector already hooked up. It does come with a power brick unlike the Mac Mini now that's all integrated. This is a 120 watt power supply. So it is rather large here, but it is necessary. 
and I found the system consumes about 90 watts max under load. Here you've got two 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports. These are Intel controllers, I-226Vs. Both of those ports perform at the performance you would expect. We're getting pretty much the full 2.5 gigabits per second out of them, both up and down. So that was nice to see, especially for using this as a server of some kind. So that was good. You also have some additional display output options beyond your USB 4 ports. So you've got HDMI and DisplayPort here. And so you can get a total of four displays running out of this thing, two of them through the USB 4 ports and another two through your HDMI and DisplayPort out. And then over here you have two USB 2.0 ports that are good for plugging in wired keyboards and mice. So that is the overall configuration here. Why don't we plug it in now and see how it performs. Now this computer will ship with a licensed copy of Windows 11 Pro and we'll take a look at Linux running on this device in a little bit. It goes without saying that when you've got a beefy Ryzen processor like this one has, most basic tasks here are going to perform very nicely here. We're running this at 4K60 right now, and as you can see, there is just no lag or slowdown. The system is very responsive, jumping around from one activity to the next. We can boot up the Brave browser here and go to the nasa.gov homepage, and as we are Scrolling around the page here, as you can see, everything is super fast here without any issues. I do have it connected up via Ethernet right now, but it also has an Intel AX200 Wi-Fi radio. This will run at 160 megahertz wide for its uh, bandwidth, but it does not support 6E, which would give you the 6 gigahertz band. But nonetheless, the Wi-Fi is more than capable as of course is the ethernet. Now what you're looking at here is some 4K 60 video playing back from one of my YouTube channels here. It is able to keep up with the video without issue. I did get a couple of drop frames when it first spun up, but after it caught up, things were fine here. One thing to note is that this is good for playing back video from YouTube and Netflix and others. And yes, you can hook this up to a television, but I do think that set top boxes like the Nvidia Shield and the Apple TV are much better for home theater activities, primarily because those devices support all of the surround modes and HDR modes that Windows PCs typically struggle with. And of course, it's hard to operate a Windows computer from across the room. They don't really have a good lean back interface. So while this might be good for a server of some kind, I don't think it's so great for a lean back home theater experience, although it might do well in the gaming sphere, which we'll take a look at in a few minutes here. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 20.9 on version 3.0 of that benchmark. That is the exact same score we got on another mini PC running with Intel's current chip offering. So good performance on both with the numbers to back it up. But take a look at that Apple Mac Mini M4 score, almost double the performance on that browser benchmark. I didn't notice that big of a difference in using the Mac Mini that I reviewed last week compared to this one but that M4 chip is quite powerful and very efficient at delivering that power. This is certainly no slouch, but in some areas the M4 can do a little better and this might be one of those places. But again, it's hard to really see the difference when you're using the computer day to day. And for less money, this actually has doubled the RAM and a lot more storage versus the Mac Mini's entry-level version. And a little bit earlier, we did some video editing with DaVinci Resolve with a 4K60 video project. As you can see there, it successfully did that cross-dissolve in real time without any slowdown or lag. And I think if you're doing basic video editing similar to what you see here, or perhaps some of the stuff I do here on the YouTube channel, this device should be able to accomplish that video editing task without many issues. But if you're doing more higher end video editing tasks, like a lot of color grading and 3D motion effects, that's where having a higher end PC with a higher end GPU might make the difference. But you do have some expandability here and you might be able to plug that GPU in to that Oculink or Thunderbolt port, which will give you a little bit more horsepower for video editing. But for the basics, like you just saw, this is certainly more than adequate. So let's move on now to gaming. This is Red Dead Redemption 2 running at 1080p at the lowest settings. To my surprise, the Ryzen 8845 here was able to run this game mostly at 60 frames per second. It would sometimes dip into the mid 50s, but by and large, this was a playable 60 frames per second experience 
just using the onboard GPU. It's pretty impressive to see how far these Ryzen chips have come. And I think if you are looking to play some games on here, this will get the job done for you even without having to buy one of those external GPU contraptions. Now this is No Man's Sky, another game we like to try out on all of our PC reviews. This is running at 1080p at the standard settings and we were getting close to 60 frames per second here. Depending on the activity, we could get up to about 55 or 60 out in space and about 45 to 55 running around on the ground here. Now I've been looking at this game with mini PCs for a while and they recently updated the graphics and I think that might have impacted the frame rates a bit on lower end hardware. But still, uh, at the standard low settings here, the game is very, very playable and another example of a game that runs well on this hardware. I also tried some emulation. This is the Xbox 360 emulator Xenia running here. This is still in active beta, so it's probably not quite optimized yet. So we weren't able to get beyond 30 frames per second running Burnout Revenge here at 1080p. I did turn it down to 720p where it did a little bit better, but still not quite all the way there. So I think a beefier PC might be required for the full frame rate. But the PlayStation 2 and the GameCube and everything back from that all ran very nicely on the hardware with some graphical enhancements dialed in as well. So from a gaming perspective, these Ryzen chips keep getting better and better with each iteration. And this one, I think, is the best one we've seen yet. And on the 3D Mark Times by Benchmark test, we got a score of 3,230. That is slightly below what we saw out of Intel's Core Ultra 5 125H, but still uh, very competitive here. You can also see how it stacks up against some other devices we've looked at recently, including the Lenovo Legion Go handheld and a Snapdragon X Elite processor that was running inside of an HP laptop. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a passing grade of 99%. That means you're not going to lose much performance here, even under heavy sustained load. The fan is very quiet. When it's sitting idle, it is silent. When the fan is running, it's a more lower pitched fan noise. It's not a high pitched whiny thing, so it shouldn't be too distracting. And of course, if you're playing a game, the game audio will likely drown out the sound of the fan completely. But this is definitely among the quieter ones that I have looked at. You do want to keep the sides and the bottom here clear for that fan. There's another fan at the top, which keeps the memory and the storage area cool. And it has a little bit of an air gap here to get some airflow going into that section. So for two fans, it is very, very quiet. Now, when it's sitting idle, it's consuming about 13 to 15 watts. And of course, if you've got stuff running in the background, that'll spike the power a little bit. And then under load, I was getting a maximum of about 90 watts of power consumption. And there's still plenty of power budget left in the power supply. All right, one last thing to take a look at here, and that is its Linux performance. We've got Ubuntu 24.10 loaded up here. Everything seems to be detected properly, including the 4K display audio, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, everything seemed to spin right up when we booted this up without issue. So I am pretty confident that you'll be able to dual boot whatever your favorite flavor of Linux is along with Windows or maybe even multiple flavors of Linux. But altogether here, performance on the Linux side feels just as good as it does on the Windows side of things. So if you wanted to switch up your operating system, I think you've got that option here. Now, one last thing to talk about, and that is the fact that GMK Tech is located in China. They do not have a significant domestic presence here in the United States or many other countries. So if you run into trouble with one of these things, you're gonna have to go through some effort to get those issues resolved. And that's something I like to remind people about when we're looking at these little computers. But still, for the price point, I think it delivers quite a bit, especially when you compare it to the Mac Mini we looked at about a week ago. That computer, of course, is a lot of performance with its M4 processor, but it only ships with 16 gigs of RAM to this one's 32. And you also get a nice terabyte of storage on this mini PC versus only 256 gigabytes on the base model Apple. So if you're looking for a PC that can run Windows and Linux applications and, of course, a wide library of games. These are definitely worth considering. You can really get into a pretty powerful PC now for not all that much money. That's going to do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.